Scripture reading is James 1, 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. After Emmanuel Choir and Nisi Orchestra's praise, we will watch the senior pastor's video sermon entitled Heaven, Session 31. Having brothers and sisters, members of branch churches and local sanctuaries, all believers in the world who are attending this service through Internet and viewers, from today, I will talk to you about the cases of those who went into the third kingdom of heaven. In order to go into the third kingdom of heaven, we must have the fourth level of faith, which is the faith to love God to the utmost degree. This is the faith to love God first. We put our love God before our parents or even our children. Also, we love God more than ourselves, so we can sacrifice our lives for God. People like this have the evidences of loving God first. The evidence of loving God is keeping His commandments. Those who truly love God will keep the commandments not out of a sense of duty, but with joy and gladness. Then as a result, they will be holy, which means they become true children of God. In our church, there are people who obey the word as they heard and become sanctified within a short period of time. One of them could have gone into New Jerusalem also, only if she had one more year in her earthly life. But due to one occasion of disobedience, she could not go into New Jerusalem. She passed away in 1987. But I still vividly remember her actions and the aroma of goodness. She is one of the people whom I really will always miss. When I explain to you about her faith, I hope you will gain much from it. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will take hold of the better heavenly dwelling places with greater hope. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, the, the one I'm going to talk about now is a deaconess. She joined our church when it opened. At the time, she was a novice believer. She was with us for about five years. Although the number of years of her Christian life was re relatively short, she go into the third kingdom of heaven. Also, she is one of the highest among those who are in the third kingdom of heaven. Then what kind of faith did she have that she could become sanctified in such a short time? The answer is very simple. Since she met, she had met the Lord, she only lived by the word of God. Although she didn't fully understand the deep heart and will of God, once she came to know the will of God, she just obeyed it. She was only yet sin, amen. She had a good heart that had no evil. She never had any conflicts or troubles with others. Her face was always filled with joy. So when I saw her, I had peace. I was happy and I could gain joy just to see her face. But there are some people who are the opposite. It's because they caused me to be, to be concerned and worried. Are you giving happiness to others when they see you? Or are you causing worry and anxiety? We can feel whether somebody loves and obeys God just by seeing His face. The Holy Spirit re rejoices when we see them, so we have happiness and peace. This deaconess was so good in heart. I couldn't find any form of evil in her. She was also a very faithful worker. She took care of the difficult and undesirable work. Since it was the beginning of this church, there weren't many workers in the church, so she took care of many things. Still, she never complained. 
She worked only with joy and thanks. She was such a precious worker. Suppose somebody did something wrong, and her leader thought it, that it was done by her and rebuked her harshly. She would accept the rebuke as if she had done it herself. She would feel sorry for, himself, for herself. Well, she never did something she was severely scolded for at all. She wouldn't give any kind of excuse, such as, I did not know, do it, I don't know about it. Even though she didn't do anything wrong, she would just accept a reproof. Joseph, was, who was sold as a slave to Egypt, was like that. So was Abraham and Daniel. Also, she would not have any resentment, but rather she had thankful heart for receiving such advice. What kind of heart do you have when you are scolded by someone? If you were scolded for something that you didn't do, would you still be able to accept it without grumbling or resentment? In most cases, even when it is their, their own fault, people give excuses. Rather than accept their own faults, they try to reveal others' faults. They also blame the circumstances. Also, they may just hear it quietly but have resentment in the heart. Even if the content of the rebuke is appropriate, they think, this person doesn't understand my situation. Then their resentment shows as the colors of their faces may change due to sadness, or they become angry. Even those who are said to have relatively good hearts react in this way in many situations. But in the case of this thickness, even though she was rebuked for no reason, she accepted it as if it were her own fault, feeling really sorry about it. I never rebuked her. But while working together, she was sometimes rebuked and pointed, but she never made an excuse. She took all with smile and joy. She didn't have any resentment or personal feelings. Her heart was different in comparison with others. It means she didn't have any form of evil. Because she has such a good heart, she could go into the third kingdom heaven, although she lived the Christian life for only a short time. Only if she had lived the Christian life for one more year, she could have gone, to, gone into New Jerusalem. But she had one occasion of disobedience and lost a chance to go into New Jerusalem. She took care of the works in my residence, and one day when I saw her, I could see that she lost her, most of her energy. She seemed really worn out. God let her stop taking food to take her to heaven. Because she didn't commit sins, she did not die of a disease. She lost her desire to eat anything, and naturally all her energy went out, and she died. It is not that you quit eating for a specific reason. If you quit eating naturally for about a week, your spirit will eventually be cold. When we offer fasting prayer, God sustains us. But if we just don't take food, the energy from the body goes out very quickly. This thickness was in such a condition, and she had already lost most of her energy. She was not sick or in pain. She was not hungry. If she had been hungry, she would have tried to eat. But she was not hungry, and she didn't have any appetite. So I told her to come to my house, prayer house, and receive the prayer for the next week. I suggested that she accompany me because the Holy Spirit moved my heart that way. It's because she was such a faithful and obedient person, and also her husband would come with her. I wanted to pray for her every day and hold on to God to extend her life. But she thought she would disturb my prayers, and she didn't come to my prayer house. She went to another place to rest with her husband, but she did not 
she did not recover. When I came back home from my prayer house, she was lying down. It was the moment when her spirit was about to leave. God was holding her life so that she could see me and receive my prayer for the last moment. She was such a faithful and obedient person, and I was kind of heartbroken because God took her so early. So I prayed to God, Father, why do you take her so early? Then the answer was, you will find it out after just one week. He continued, this daughter is obedient and faithful. She fulfilled her duty. But if I leave her on earth for more time, she will suffer so much in her heart. And I, as God said, after one week, I came to know the reason why. The reason is related to her family members, so I won't explain it here. She was sanctified at the time, but she was little short in the aspect of being faithful in all God's house. That is why she could go into only the third kingdom of heaven, not New Jerusalem. If she had lived a year longer, she could have entered New Jerusalem. As a shepherd, I always have a kind of sense of loss and sorrowful feeling, thinking she could have gone to New Jerusalem only if a little more time she had been given to her. Brothers and sisters, because God of love knows this heart of mine, she would comfort her with many heavenly words. Now I will tell you about the glory that these deaconies will enjoy in heaven. Her house has many special jewel decorations. First, the gate of her house is arc shape and is decorated with pearls. It's because when she was on this earth, she has offered up tearful prayers with so much mourning and endurance. For her tearful prayers, praying for God's kingdom and righteousness, God pays her back with this kind of reward. Also, God has let us know that she would have a, a very special reward. Later, when we go to heaven, among our members who do not enter into New Jerusalem, she will be the first one for me to visit. In that visit, I will take one of the jewels that are in the living room of my house in New Jerusalem and put it on the gate of her house. This way, God is compensating the sense of loss I had when she left early. I put the jewel on the gate of her house. But scientific fiction movies where people go to the future by a time machine. God is similarly let me know about what will happen in the future. Of course, you can't actually go to the future by a time machine. It happens in sci-fi movie. Even if one jewel is taken out from the living room of my house, there won't be any mark or blemish left. Also, as explained before, the jewels in New Jerusalem are completely different from the ones in the Third Kingdom of Heaven. They give out double-fold or three-fold cold lights, and the strength of light is much stronger. So having just one jewel from New Jerusalem on the gate of her house in the Third Kingdom will be such a great honor for her. Because this thickness rank is high in the Third Kingdom, Everyone in the third kingdom already knows her. And when the jewel from the New Jerusalem is placed on her house gate, her glory will be even greater. It's because those who are third kingdom know from whose house the jewel came. All the rewards in heaven are given by God the Father. I cannot just give to anybody at my will. The reason why I can give this jewel to her is because it is right according to justice. It's because God the Father also acknowledges the fact that she was such a great strength to the shepherd. It's also because the Father knows the heart of the shepherd towards her. It means God knows the heart of the shepherd, the thinking she could have enjoyed the glory of New Jerusalem only if she had been a little more faithful. It is not only by the love of the shepherd, but also that she had the qualifications to receive such a reward according to justice. Therefore, the jewel I give, uh, I will give to her will be more than just a jewel. It's because the jewel will be the symbol that shows how 
how much she is loved, even though she is a thir in the third kingdom of heaven, and how great the strength she was to the shepherd. Now, let me introduce to you her confession. I didn't do anything. I didn't give anything. I wasn't any strength to the shepherd. I wasn't really any joy to the shepherd. But the glory I enjoy here is so great beyond expression. I am so embarrassed and I can only give thanks. This thickness had this kind of mind even on this earth. If she was praised for what she did well, she was so embarrassed that she didn't know what to do. She gave the credit to others. I am so thankful just for saving me, and I am even more thankful for giving me the third kingdom. How beautiful and grand my house is. It is now bigger than houses in New Jerusalem, but there are so many beautiful and enrapturing things that it cannot be compared with any house on earth. I am so thankful for such a beautiful house, and I am more thankful for allowing me such a shining and glorious position in the third kingdom of heaven. When I was in the world, I was a worthless person. I couldn't even have one gold ring in the world. And now, I have so many jewels here. I am so thankful for making my spirit beautiful and letting me have so many things in my eternal house. I couldn't have any, any of those with my own strength. I couldn't come into this place with my own strength. I give thanks for giving me such precious things that I could not have with my own strength. I give thanks and I give thanks again. Looking forward to seeing you later. I will pray for you. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, physically she seemed to be of little value, but spiritually she became such a precious person. She was also loved by the Lord God of hosts. She was always serving others in lowly positions, and God lifted her high. It is just as Jesus said, whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. But because she was a little short in the aspect of being faithful in all God's house, she couldn't go into New Jerusalem. But you here have a chance to go into New Jerusalem. If you diligently accomplish sanctification and are faithful in all God's house, anyone can go into New Jerusalem. What is the reason why we are looking into the faith of those who went first in so much detail? It is to reflect our faith in the mirror of their faith. If those who went earlier took a shortcut, we can follow their examples. If those who went to heaven earlier made mistakes, we should not make the same mistakes. That way, we can go the shortest way without wasting any time. We can go into spirit and whole spirit and reach New Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to explain about an elder of our church. Many people thought he could go into New Jerusalem. It's because she was, he was very faithful in his Christian life. He prayed hard and attended various services diligently. He loved God and the souls so much. He always worked hard to feed our members, other members, with the spiritual bread of life. He also evangelized people whenever he had time. He was a famous physicist in Korea, and he was a professor in the university, but he never cared about any worldly fame. He never had any desire to take fleshly things. If he had wanted to gain fame, he could have spent more time on his research. If he had wanted more wealth, he could have received much money through his research. But he didn't want those things. He rather spent all his time for God. Whatever money he had, he gave to God. Having no selfish desires, he gave up everything on this earth, and he kept hope only for the heavenly kingdom. 
But God called His Spirit in 2003. At the time, God told us that He was going into the third kingdom of heaven. He loved God so much and led such a faithful Christian life. So why did God take Him at the time? It was because to take Him was the greatest comfort and blessing for Him. In fact, each day of his earthly life was very difficult for him. It was as though he carried such a heavy burden every day. His longing to become sanctified and to go into New Jerusalem was so great. But that longing rather became a burden for him. He had put tremendous pressure on his heart, thinking, I have to become sanctified. Also, he was very self-critical, thinking that he was lacking so much. To feel this pressure on his heart less, he showed such faithful deeds, even almost as much as to harm his body. But the burden on his heart could not go away through the deeds. Some of our members have a similar style in believing their Christian lives. I have to be faithful and bear fruit. They have this agony. Also, they are very, very impatient, thinking, I have to go to New Jerusalem. But sanctification or New Jerusalem cannot be achieved just by having agony or worries and being patient about it. Also, it cannot be achieved just by your own efforts. Without God's help, we cannot achieve it. But surprisingly, many people are suffering because of the sense of duty and the pressure that they lay upon themselves. They are causing their own pressure, stress, and hardship. Why are there such cases? It's because of the personal frameworks formed in each individual's personality. Four years before this elder passed away, God had told me about the framework of his personality. God told me that he had to change his personality from its foundation. He had to think everything positively and have a more generous heart. God said he had to have more generous and broad heart to understand and embrace everything. He formed his personality to a dark and negative character while growing up. So he was always gloomy and worried. His thoughts arising from his worries created great anxiety for him. Also, it only took a little irritation to hurt his feelings. It took a long time before this character was healed. Even in the world, what happens when a person has so many worries? He will lose his appetite and his life energy, and his health will deteriorate. Also, those who are very sensitive do not gain weight. On the other hand, those who have positive thoughts are bright. Even in difficult things, they have easygoing and composed attitudes saying, it will go well, I can do it. The negative personality hinders us from going into spirit. Especially in the case of this elder, he also has some wrong ideas about faith. It was about condemning himself and putting pressure on himself. Even concerning the most minor fault or shortcoming, he blamed himself so much and condemned himself to the point of torturing himself. He said he believed in the love of God and the power of the precious blood of the Lord, but his wrong view of faith did not break down. So he was always shedding tears with thanks for the power of the precious blood of the Lord. Of course, we have to give thanks for the grace of the Lord. But this elder was a little different. Suppose you did something wrong to your parents, but you soon realized your fault and you repented thoroughly before your parents. You were so sorry about it, and you promised you would never do it again, shedding tears. And as you promised, you never did the same thing again. 
But let's say every time you see your parents, you shed tears without being able to lift up your head, saying, "I am so sorry for what happened at the time. Please forgive me." If you do that every time you see your parents, what will your parents feel? They already forgave you and forgot about it. And if you keep on doing that, they will be embarrassed. It's difficult to say that such parents and children are united in love. It's the same between God the Father and you. Of course, until you become sanctified completely, you sometimes have to tear your heart and pray. Also, if you have committed sins knowing the truth, you have to repent very thoroughly. But if you are not someone like this, but you are just in the process of being changed into spirit, what would the will of God be? You may be sorry before God, but you should not lose heart or fall into despair. You have to say, thank you for letting me realize myself, and then receive God's strength through fervent prayers and cast off those things. When God the Father sees these children who are changing, how pleased He will be. If you become disheartened just because you found your evil, God the Father will also feel worried about you. But this elder never had a moment of rest in his heart because of the framework of his personality. He wanted to, to he wanted to change into spirit so much, but the speed was slow compared to the to his efforts. That is why he could not be healed of his disease completely that he had had long before he came to our church. He was always weak in body, so I always advised him to gain some weight. God also felt sympathy towards him and worried it for him. He explained to me in detail about the framework of his personality. God told me that he could become healthy only after his personality was fundamentally changed. So I even gave a series of five sermons with the title Self-Realization. At the time, this elder discovered himself through the message and gave thanks. His weak body began to recover too. Everybody has to break her, himself after he realizes himself. It is especially true if the framework of one's personality is from the over a long period of time. It cannot be done just by one's own effort and strength. We have to receive the help of the Holy Spirit. We have to commit ourselves to God completely, fully believing in the love of God. But for this elder, the fact that he came to discover about himself and that he had to break it became another heavy burden. When he found himself, he rejoiced, but soon he bound himself up with it again, laying another burden on himself. He prayed longer and more earnestly, but the problem was that many times he prayed within his own framework. He prayed so much, spending, spending so much time, but he couldn't receive the inspiration of the Holy Spirit easily. He had more of the sense of duty that he had to pray, which means he wanted to do it himself. Those who completely empty themselves before God can receive the inspiration of the Holy Spirit just by calling the Father once. But in the case of this elder, he had to call the father many times. To that same extent, he was, it was more difficult for him. He had beaten himself to make himself obedient to the extent that it was cruel. Since he was very strict with himself, he had that kind of attribute when he was teaching others well. So when his, he was teaching the word of God, he could not make others feel the love of God and gain strength. When he was in charge of the college students, he tried so hard to give and teach one more thing. But he did it confined in his own self frameworks, and it made the students difficult to learn from him. For example, if you go to some retreat, then the weather is so hot, isn't it? Yeah. 
then even if you stay under a shade, if an air conditioning system doesn't work, it's hot, isn't it? But he delivered the message more than two hours in the room, which was crowded with students in a hot summer day. I, I even asked him whether he was done or not. I felt sorry for the students. They wanted, to he, well, they wanted him to stop, but he wanted to give and teach just one more, one more thing. Even though the students couldn't take it anymore, he did it. It was his self-praying. He made them feel the pressure in their heart that he, they had to live by the word of God just as he did to himself. That is why many souls could not stay close to him. People knew he was a good man, but it was not very comfortable to stay close to him. Brothers and sisters, after all, these elders could not break the framework of his personality. This way, even though he was able to come into spirit because of his framework, his self frame, he couldn't make it. He could have heard the clear voice of the Holy Spirit and received his guidance and come into spirit, but he couldn't make it due to his frame. His body and mind became weaker and weaker. Finally, he could no longer resist illness. God could heal him any time, but even if he had been healed and his life extended, he wouldn't have been able to lay down the burden of his heart. Unless he broke the strong framework of personality, he could not live even one day at peace. So rather than letting his soul suffer in this world, God let him take eternal rest. And by giving him a test of faith, he gave him a chance to go to, into a better heavenly dwelling place. Namely, God took him to the third kingdom of heaven. At the time, this elder was not fully sanctified. So he might only have gone to only the second kingdom of heaven that way. But during his earthly life, he longed for New Jerusalem so much in his heart. He loved God so much. He also loved his shepherds. He never ceased praying. He was faithful to God's kingdom. He never looked out to the world. He cut himself out from the worldly things. Also, he loved the soul so much that he showed such faithful days. He never ceased to pray. So God the Father gave him his last chance of blessing. That chance was a test to check whether he could show the faith of martyrdom in a life-threatening situation. It was a test to prove his qualification to gain the crown of life in the third kingdom heaven. If a person who can give up his own life to keep the faith, keeping on living and lead a Christian life, he can certainly become sanctified. This elder had a heart to accomplish his sanctification if he had been given more time. But to do that, he would have had to spend many difficult times. That is why God called his spirit early to take his burden away. God gave him a chance to show the faith of martyrdom to give his life so that he could be given the third kingdom of heaven. Even though he was diseased, he never wanted to have any desire to rely on any man, even until the last moment. He committed his life completely into God's hand. Even when he couldn't move his body properly, his knees before God in prayers and worship services were not changed. Even when it was difficult for him even to walk, he came to the sanctuary and attended the service with all his strength. He kept his seat until the end. Even when he didn't have strength to speak, he tried to pray in his mind. Likewise, he kept his faith before God and showed unchanging deeds and passed the test of faith. 
God knows the heart of each one, but He cannot just take a person into the third kingdom who does not have the respective evidence of faith. The enemy devil and Satan may object to it, saying, He is not sanctified, and why is He given the third kingdom of heaven? God knew Abraham would sacrifice Isaac. God knew he, he had faith, but Abraham should show uh, the evidence of his faith and pass it. Only then could his spirit and soul prosper, and he could receive all the more great blessings, and Satan couldn't accuse him. By showing the evidence of faith, the people who loved God in the Old Te and New Testament and who passed the test, they could give great glory to God and receive the great power of God. But this elder showed the evidence of his unchanging deeds of faith until he gave his life, so the enemy devil and Satan cannot object to it. Namely, the faith of martyrdom of this elder was proven that it was not a violation of the justice to give him the third kingdom of heaven. Let me conclude the message, loving brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, we looked into the faith of an elder who was an acknowledged to have the faith of martyrdom and will go into the third kingdom of heaven. If just his enthusiasm and faithfulness alone were considered, he could have gone into New Jerusalem. But because of the framework of his personality, he couldn't look up to New Jerusalem with hope, but took it as a burden. But he prayed without ceasing, and he loved God, the Lord, and the Shepherd so much. And he was so faithful to God's kingdom. That's why God allowed him to overcome the test so that he could lead him to the third kingdom of heaven. Is New Jerusalem hope for you or a big burden? To those who confess with faith, I can go too. God will help me if I try with faith. New Jerusalem must be great hope for them. On the contrary, to those who think negatively thinking, I lack so much, and what should I do about it? New Jerusalem must be a burden for them. If these two kinds of people have the same level of faith, who can reach New Jerusalem more quickly? It will be with those who think positively and confess with faith. To think and confess, I lack so much, is not true humbleness or goodness. The humbleness and goodness that God recognizes is to completely trust and rely on God, because we acknowledge that the fact that we cannot do anything by our own strength, we completely trust and rely on God. This is true humbleness. Before I met God, I was a very introversive person. But after I met God, I changed. I couldn't do anything considering myself, but holding on to the verse, everything is possible to those who believe, everything was actually possible. I didn't try to do anything by myself. I believe that not only in the kingdom of God, but also my breathing and living itself was only the grace and power of the Father God. Not only in big things, but also even in very small things, I left everything unto God. This is the result of it today. Whatever kind of personality you have, if you break your frameworks and empty yourself, you can be caught by the power of God. May you confess, I can do anything through Him who gives me strength, and powerfully go into spirit and whole spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let us receive the prayer for the sick of the senior pastor through video. Please lay your hands on your sick part or lay your hands on your chest for the desire of your heart and receive the prayer with faith. Hallelujah! Almighty God, our loving Father, please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now.
Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all in trails, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away, light calm. Please scorch all their terminal incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, and urine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral perplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problem, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes say well, let the ears say well, let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents, fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated, bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the rule of the power of the air, the evil forces of any places, and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false, and deceitful spirits, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bonds of wickedness. Darkness, go away. Light come. Father God, give them strength to crowd in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery words of the Holy Spirit, heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things, and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I've met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you.